obviously everybody's heard of it. Everybody has a pretty good idea of what it is. Uh, Marsha, where did it come from? Where did the Enneagram first break into the world? Where, where are we seeing this? <laughs> Invented. 1916. <laughs> okay, there we go. 1916, 104 years ago, a guy named George Gurdjieff, who was this like spiritual seeker, esoteric type who was looking into different uh, belief systems, not the major religions, but, you know, the more secretive kind of Gnostic type things. Um, he did a diagram, a nine pointed diagram that we would call the Enneagram. That's what it means. It means a nine-pointed diagram. Um, and he claimed that this was like a picture of the universe, that you could fit everything into the Enneagram. All the laws of the universe would fit in this. Everything could fit there. Um, for example, he did a musical scale around the nine points. He felt it could illustrate everything in reality. Um all the mathematical laws, all the spiritual laws, everything. Um, he came up with the idea of the law of three and the law of seven, and he applied it to the Enneagram. Basically, he was like playing around with it. How do all the different nine points um, integrate with each other or how they all fit together? And he would put things in there to make it, quote unquote, work. Um, it had nothing to do, though, with uh, a type or a personality or anything else that is being taught now. <clears throat> and his followers, um, he had a follower named Uspensky. Now, Gurdjieff never wrote about the Enneagram, but his follower Uspensky did write about the Enneagram based on what Gurdjieff taught, according to Uspensky. Um, and Uspensky was still talking about it as a spiritual kind of diagram. Uh, now, after that, that was he and Gurdjieff both died in the late 1940s. Somewhere around the 1960 or, or in the 60s, this man named Oscar Ichazo, who had a school in Chile called Arica, and it's in a town called Arica, Chile, on the coast, started teaching it. Now, how did he get it um, in the in the research that um, I was doing? Uh, it was it's. There's no definitive history. And what you find with the Enneagram, which is true for a lot of things from the New Age, you find a lot of different contradictory stories. Yeah, it's really hard to get the facts mm. because all these people give stories. <laughs> right. um, it seems like the most likely was that he ran into some followers of Gurdjieff. Gurdjieff still has followers around the world. There are actually people who, who are like sort of cult followers of his teachings. Um, and <clears throat> somehow, probably, uh, uh, Ichazo came across this, and he decided to kind of teach it his own way. And so in his little secret occult school in Eureka, he was teaching the Enneagram as uh, a picture of ego fixations. So he made each of the nine points an ego fixation, something you get fixated, your ego gets fixated. Ichazo's view was that your ego, your outward, who you seem to be outwardly, your outward personality and everything, was a cover-up for the real true inner essential self, the, or the true essence in the self. Your essence is actually pure mm. and untouched by anything bad or anything wrong. So you have this essence in you, but it's been covered up by all of these false ideas you've had about yourself, by the experiences you've gone through, by what other people have told you, by how you've been conditioned. That's the ego, is the false self. This is an idea that's very common in, in, in Jungian thinking and in the New Age as well. Um, even in astrology, I was a professional astrologer. And so the idea is that there's this pure, untouched self. Uh, and so that's what he taught. So you find your ego fixation and when you understand that that's not really you, then you can see this pure self at the center of who you are. So it still wasn't being taught as anything person personality wise or any of the way it's really being taught today. Ichazo had a student at his school named Claudio Naranjo, who was basically a, he was a psychiatrist, 
but he was a spiritual seeker. He went to Ichazo school because he was searching for things. He was searching spiritual truths. After his son had died, he had a crisis and he started the spiritual journey. He learned the Enneagram from Ichazo and then he took it to a very edgy place in Big Sur, California <laughs> called Esalen. Um, and it was a very wild place with experimental psychology, people doing a halluc hallucinogen, uh, hallucinogenic drugs, uh, trying to have spiritual trips with drugs like they did in the 60s, etc. He took it there. He went there around 1970. And he claims in two videos on YouTube that he got the types that we now associate with the Enneagram. He got the types via automatic writing. Automatic writing is a form of spirit contact where you open yourself up and you let whatever spirit or entity use your hand to write out things. And he says that's how he got these types. He said he said partly his observations, but mostly automatic writing. Um, and then he confirmed it through his own observations. So it's very subjective. First of all, it's coming from um, a spirit, which we know is not, yeah. <laughs> not from God. That's bad news. <laughs> these would be fallen angels. Yeah. And he had these spirit guides. He and Ichazo both had spirit guides. Um, in fact, Ichazo was very open about these um, spirits. He talked about Metatron and the Green Kutub were two of the big ones. And he said his group was guided by an interior master. Wow. So he was into spirit contact as was Naranjo, and they both also did um, drugs to, to have spiritual trips. Um, there's, a, uh, there's an interesting video where Naranjo talks about his time um, with Ichazo and talks about Ichazo. It's very, very, it's a very revealing about the new age mindset. Yeah. And then uh, he, so he starts teaching it with the types at Esalen, and he has a, um, now there's two different stories about how the Jesuits Jesuits got it, but there was a man named Bob Oaks who was a Jesuit who learned it from Naranjo, and Naranjo gave him permission to teach it, and, and Naranjo said that he was the only person he gave permission to, and he, Bob Oaks took it to a Catholic seminary in uh, Chicago and taught it to some priests there uh, in the seminary, and then it also, Helen Palmer who was a, called herself a psychic at the time. And I remember when she was a psychic because <clears throat> I was a new ager, you know, in the, in the late seventies and into the, all, all the 1980s. Uh, and she was a known figure. She uh, took the Enneagram and started infusing it with her new age philosophy and other people picked up on it. And meanwhile, the Jesuit Catholic use of it, uh, was being used in a very limited way, like at retreat centers and things like that. It was never approved of or endorsed by the Catholic Church. And in fact, I think they may have actually written something against it, but I, I can't remember for sure. I know that the Catholic, um, a Catholic journal, I think it's called the Catholic Reporter, has an article about all these um, demonic beginnings, the spirit contact and everything. Mm. So um, it was not approved of by the Catholic Church, but these people were teaching it. Uh, and some of the Catholics who were also counselors, a few of them did books on it, but most of the books on the Enneagram were, were New Age books written by New Agers. The book, The Road Back to You, the first Enneagram book published by an evangelical publisher, IVP, came out in 2016. That kind of gave a stamp of approval to the Enneagram. And the two authors were Suzanne Stabile, who was mentored for many years by Richard Rohr, and Ian Cron, who's also, a, 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 I would call him a follower of Richard Rohr. Uh, they both teach, both have taught or spoken at Richard Rohr's center. <clears throat> center. So basically, they're disciples of Richard Rohr, and they're the ones who wrote the first Enneagram book. So, okay, so that Richard Rohr... <laughs> <laughs> there he is again. That Richard. <laughs> so, <talking> okay. <laughs> so the 2016 first Enneagram book published on an evangelical Christian publisher, is that when the 
sort of explosion of the Enneagram happened in the church, would you say? Yes. Yes. And it wasn't quite an explosion at the beginning. It was okay. kind of out there. Um, you know, the book would be looked at by some people and you'd hear now and then people giving a talk on it, but it wasn't really popular or taken up. I think the next year when, um, Chris Hort's book was published, The Sacred Enneagram by Zondervan, yes. that gave the Enneagram another push because here's another publisher. And, um, by the way, here again, um, Chris Horitz was mentored by Richard Rohr. So now you have the first two books coming from Richard Rohr's disciples. Now we have we have over 15, way over, I think we're up to maybe 20 Enneagram books. Um, two just came out this this summer, just yeah. and, and September 15th. So it's it's now it has started really exploding, I would say, around 2018. And then it just took off in 2019. Yeah. That's when I was trying to keep up with it. Right. <laughs> I couldn't keep up with it. Right. I actually first started warning about it um, on Facebook in 2014. Wow. But my first article on the Enneagram, which is on my website, it's called the um, Enneagram GPS Gnostic Path to the Self. Mm. which I still think is the, uh, an accurate title. I wrote title. that in 2011, Elisa. Wow. And the reason I wrote it is because that's when I saw it in the progressive church. Wow. And so I thought, okay, it's in the progressive church. That's a little too close for comfort. Yes. I, I need to write about it. And I yeah. had been asked about it by a few people. So I did my research and did my article 2011. And I thought, oh, taken care of. <laughs> so I'm just going to say this. So I'm just going to say this, you know, none of us are perfect in our, in our analysis and we're all learning as we go. And we're just trying to take everything and compare it with scripture. But I think that I had up until this point viewed the Enneagram largely as something uh, else that's maybe just kind of creeping in everywhere. Uh, but I think that you have convinced me that this really is, obviously, it's a new age with occult beginnings and things like that, that is coming in through the progressive church, it would seem. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's one way that progressive leaders, such as Richard Rohr and Ian Crone and, and others, uh, can get their ideas into the evangelical church yes. and maybe hook some people because that was always that was always a concern that so many of these books that you see that are marketed to Christians about the Enneagram are written by progressive Christians, particularly just this this incredible influence that Richard yes. Rohr has. Mm -hmm.